Hey guys, Ryan Amint from Chasing Happiness Podcast. Hope you guys are having a great day today on the podcast. We have David Buck. David is empowering business professionals and their financial advisors to craft purposeful and fulfilling in-career and post-career lifestyles. David, welcome to the show. And I know it's been uh, hit and miss. This is our second run at it. So thank you for being patient. Look forward to having you on the show. Thanks. Thanks for keeping at it. And it's an honor to be here. Thank you. So before we get into what you're doing, how about a little background on who you are? So I am currently a business owner. I own a company called Kairos Management Solutions, which is then the Infinity Lifestyle Design. And in essence, what drives my passion and what I do is this fascination with time and the idea of how people use time and how we can all use our time better. And so I do that through two different ways. One is to help people in career those who are trying to figure out how to manage all the things that are going on for greater flexibility. And then I also help people who are transitioning to retirement or post-career when all this extra time becomes available and they don't know how to fill that time that's there. There's a lot to unpack there. So I guess my first question is, how did you get in the space? So I, for decades before this, was in business development, which is the fancy term for I was a salesperson. And I learned early on that my stunning good looks and my charisma were not going to get me the sale. And so my niche was to be the most prepared person for my clients to make their lives easier. And I found that to be in the element of managing my time well and helping them manage theirs well. And that stuck with me. That became, quote, my niche in sales. And so when I exited out of corporate world to start my own business, to me, it was a natural thing for me to then take that and help people focus on improving their time. Time, our most valuable asset. And some people would disagree with that. And I don't know how they can. They think money is the most valuable asset, which you can lose all the money you want and you can go gain it all back, but you can never get time back. That is correct. So correct. So can we dive in and jump off there as time is in talking about how, let's talk about what you're doing in helping those business professionals and those other in individuals with time and what can they get back and be able to, this old adage out there that's you, your work-life balance. I think that's tough, but I think if you can effectively manage your time throughout the day, you can have a more, I, I call it more productive life. So I'd love to defer to you because you are probably more of an expert than I am. I'd love to unpack that whole work-life balance because I am yeah. I come alongside with uh, you. I actually don't like that term. And the reason why is I think if you consider balance, you have to be very steady. If you use a level, you got to hold the level just in the right spot to maintain balance and any small little change and you're out of balance. And so I prefer work-life flexibility because the idea and the concept there is you're looking for flexibility to either be able to shift to the time you need in business life, and you can also pivot and then be more flexible in your personal life. And so I use a term of relationship capital that you need to build up relationship capital on both your professional and personal lives. So you can draw on that relationship capital when you need to tell the family, hey, I got this huge project at work. I'm going to need to be focused on that. I got to put in some late hours. But the flip side is that you do such a good job at work and you're so valuable and needed there that you then can draw on that relationship capital to say, hey, I have some important events this week to my kids are in the championship for baseball for the baseball season. I really would like to cut out a little early so I can check those there. So. You dive into that flexibility instead of trying to say, how do I live in this great balance where it's perfectly one part of work into the personal? I've never been able to do it. And I haven't been able to find anybody who can do it in a sustained period. I'm with you on that. And something that I've started to adopt and I've been a, I don't know, I don't want to say against it, but time blocking. I really focus in on my time blocking during the day. So if I need to do, let's say, revenue generating tasks, my time is blocked for that and I let everything else go for that period of time. I struggle 
and I struggle because I see the phone ring or I'm doing something and I'm like, oh, I've got to respond to that text message or I got to pick up the phone or I got to respond to that email. And I started with just blocking out an hour a day and starting to stay focused. And now that's become two hours and now I'm working on three hours to where all I do is customer face, building the business and focusing on things that can generate money. Has it started turning things to where I think we're going to start getting higher up in, in what we're doing? Yes, it's still taking time and I'm only like three months into this, but I would say, and, and I want to defer to you back to this is what are your thoughts on time blocking? But then also how can we be more effective with that time when we truly need to grow our businesses as small business owners or entrepreneurs, it's the most right. critical aspect of our business. So kudos to you. I love the fact that you use time blocking and I also liked how transparent you were and vulnerable to share that it's a process to get there yes. and starting one hour and going up from there incrementally, I think is also fantastic. I am a big proponent of the calendar being the most important time management tool that we can use. Mm -hmm. And it's readily available to everybody, whether you use just about 90, I think the last time I, I did actually did a research on this, like 97% of the top 10 email platforms have a calendar and task function built into it. And so I am not a big proponent to go out and chase the shiny object of the latest app to use. There's some amazing ones out there. Start with what you have in front of you already in your calendar. And then to your point, block out those areas that are important to you, particularly for those of us who are entrepreneurs. We actually have a little bit more say in how we use our calendars and, and block our time. And so for critical elements like prospecting, content, defining your business, and then just getting out there and trying to drum up business, blocking that time off and putting yourself in almost an isolation chamber to be focused on that particular activity is an outstanding way for you to be able to find that you'll be so much more productive in that hour than if you tried to do it in three hours answering the phone, looking at your phone to figure out things. Oh, look, somebody looked at my email. I better go follow up with them. Just you stay that targeted period of productivity is you'll find you're going to get a lot more done in a shorter period of time. Uh, this is crazy. There's someone knocking on my door. So hold on. We can keep on recording. That's funny. Oh my gosh, what a day. <laughs> we don't want to go there. So we'll edit that out. That's not a, that's not a problem. So I can uh, hit on the fly. I'm sorry. Um, no, if I'll so, go for it. No. So let, I want to really go back with, to the time piece. And we were talking about that balancing and blocking and using the calendar. So the next step is, and this is where I'm just going to ask for myself and then you can take it for where it needs to go. 
I think at times when I put blocking on the actual calendar, I could also let my mind wander. And if I'm not physically doing something or I'm trying to get something done, I tend to stray to other objects, like looking at email or doing something to that extent. How, and I'm not, I, again, I'm not trying, I, I am asking for myself, but I have to figure it out, is how do we work with that? There's a lot of distractions. There's a lot of, our, our phones are a mm -hmm. mini computer. We live on them. And I think my, my, my fear is the FOMO, the fear of missing out. So if someone calls or text message, I stop, but I put my phone on do not disturb. And that seems to work a lot better. But if I'm in a lull and I want to get up and stretch my legs or whatever, I tend to get distracted. So that's another piece that I'm working on. So you suffer from what I suffer from is distractions are the single biggest time management challenge that I work with clients on based upon the research I draw on. And then when we work together to so just, I am, I battle distractions all the time. And as you noted, the biggest culprit of that is our smartphones. They are an amazing piece of technology, but the very nature of the smartphone and then many of the apps that we have on the smartphone are designed to what? They're designed to pull us from what we're doing to invest time in what they want us to do. And so social media, of which we have all of our apps on the phone, I know for me, my CRM, I have it set up where I know when, if particularly a particular client opens up an email, it's going to notify me because I want to, if particular, if we're a prospect, because of like trying to work through and nurture that particular relationship, I want to make sure I can jump when I need to. But at the same time, we also have to look at if you're a solopreneur who handles emergencies all the time, then you want that distraction. So if you're, say, a firefighter or you're doing something that like a serve pro that goes up and cleans up somebody's house or, or something like that, then you need to, you want to be distracted because that's your job. But for the rest of us, I challenge us all to say, if I'm going to devote or block out two or two hours of my time and go, quote, digitally silent, end of quote, is there going to be such an emergency with any single one of my clients that I couldn't get back to them? either later in the day or the next day. And that's the challenge I do for myself. And I try to tell everybody else to say, particularly if, for example, I've laid out my follow-up with clients, I've laid out my prospecting, when I need and how I need to do that then, what is out there that is an emergency that you really need to know about? And I would say the vast majority of the time, there's not. So own that time then and just say, chances of something happening to me or a client coming to me where it's an emergency is zero. So I'm just going to power my way through this productivity zone. And I think there's something more to that, or we can add on to it. And you tell me is I got feedback because majority of people that call me and if I don't pick up right away, I'll call them back within a short period of time. I need to set another boundary on that to where if I'm in that block out time, let's say it's two, three hours, that people understand that those hours, I will not be calling people back and they would potentially have to be called back in the afternoon and putting that on my voicemail. And I got that from a realtor that we work with that helps us buy land and so forth. And he just said flat out, I'm out prospecting, talking to people during the mornings and in the afternoons, I do all my phone calls, return phone calls. He says, I don't pick up the phone in the morning. I leave, let people listen to my voicemail and let them know that I've got a set expectation between, I think it's one o'clock and five o'clock or two o'clock and five o'clock. He actually returns phone calls. And I really like that because in the case of a real estate agent like that, and many times in the morning, people are busy. They're not as available for him to get in touch with. So that's a great to me allocation of time that says I can, he's using that availability in order to set up future business opportunities. And so he has identified what I think is really important is what is our productivity zone? And that's comprised of two elements. One is when are you the best at being productive? So that's the first thing. And for me, I'm a morning person. That's when I'm most productive. However, the second thing you have to do is 
when are either your prospects or your clients available? And sometimes those zones don't line up, but as much as you can have them overlap, that if you are doing either nurturing clients or trying to get clients during your high productivity zone, you're more apt to be able to convert than maybe not. And then if you don't and you have to work, you have to prospect outside of your productivity zone, then you can teach yourself to change. If you're a morning person, people can become afternoon people. It just, what's the personal care elements outside of your normal work structure? You're going to change and adapt to reshift your productivity zone. Do you think there's an expectation there too that you need to set with? So you're out prospecting those individuals you really don't have a connection with yet, but the clients that you have in place already to set those expectations up front, do you think that's an ideal action that we should take? So we're setting ourselves up for success from the customer relationship side? I totally agree with that. Is And I think we are. it's totally okay to teach and train your clients. So for example, whenever I have a follow-up, with a client, whether I have a phone call with them or an email, I set the expectations that I've in in a proactive way that says, Hey, listen, if I don't hear from you on Thursday, I'm going to be reaching out early than next week just to touch base with you. And flip side is I've got a busy couple of days the next day, next couple of days, can I get back to you? And so you can proactively set that and even say, I have a 24 hour rule. So if you get back to me, if you send me something and I can't get to it right away, you will hear with me in, from me within 24 hours. If for some reason you need to hear from me sooner than that, I need that to either be put in your communication, your phone message that says, Dave, this is important. I need to get back to, can you get back to me by the end of the day? Or the email do the same thing. That way you're constantly setting the expectations. And again, for most cases, people are fine with the 24 hour rule. I like that. And the expectation is there. The other piece of it is I call it anxiety. So your fear of missing out and it causes anxiety because, oh my God, I missed a call. It's not going to happen. I'm not going to be able to get them. But then once you actually set those expectations, like you said, then the client customer will actually know exactly where you're at and what you're trying, what you're going to do, your actions to get back to them is established. It's in I don't want to say per se in writing, but they understand expectations are conveyed. And here's my question. I don't think we do a very good job of that in at least being an entrepreneur. I know I've struggled with it. I've not put those out there. So how do we, how can we get better at that? Because I know it's a muscle that we have to flex. What do we do to step up our game in that department? So I am one about totally being proactive. And I think you have to turn into every, so much of what people do when they manage their time is interconnected. And so when you work on one, you find you improve in the others. You realize, oh, wow, okay, I've been procrastinating, but I fixed my distraction element a little bit. And now I find I'm not procrastinating enough. So instead of, this is where I would just say, pick one thing that you can focus on. And if it's instituting the 24 hour rule, start with that. Like you're, you did with the time block and you started with one hour. You didn't try to say, I'm going to block three different areas a day, every for five days a week. And I'm going for it. You started in one area and this idea of incrementalism will help you out tremendously. So pick one small thing, whether it is, I'm going to not answer emails for a two hour period and see what happens. Because then again, it's a low risk thing. If you don't answer for two hours, then you can affirm to say the world didn't end because I didn't answer emails for two hours. So even if you start something small where I, I'm going to take one dedicated break a day, I'm going to step away from my desk for 15 minutes and I'm not going to go to screens. I'm going to go outside and I'm going to go walk around the block for 15 minutes. Any small thing that you then say, hey, that's a habit now, then you can move on to the next thing. That brings me to, have you ever read the book Atomic Habits by any chance? I have. Yeah, it's, in, it's over here as I point to my library. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So that is a great book. I think I've read it three times and it finally stuck on the third. But the the big piece in there, and you said that is you've created a habit. And mm -hmm. when you said getting up for 15 minutes and walk around the block, I've started to do that about three weeks ago, four weeks ago in the afternoon from two to two twenty. I just go take a walk. And the other thing I do, I turn my phone on airplane mode. So I get nothing whatsoever. It's 20 minutes of just walking and just getting my head back in place. When I come back in every single day, it, it seems to recharge me to be able to do what needs to be done, typically following up on emails or follow-up calls. And I, I think that has really started helping me understand that the world is not coming to an end, like you said. But the other thing is I'm starting to create more expectations for clients and what they can expect from me and when they can expect something from me. I love that the fact that you are walking and getting away and it may seem counterintuitive because you're like, there's 20 minutes I could have done. I could have answered 20 emails in 20 minutes, but instead you step away. And this idea of this break, a break away from what you do, you give your brain a chance to reset. And you may find that, and I have found in some of the walks that I do, I, it's twice a day, I take the dog around the block, and I have <laughs> found creative things that have popped in my head on that walk. Like, I had not thought about this, and then I come back, set some time in the future to work on that, and it has helped me, it has helped create some innovation and inspiration from that as well. I'm with you on the creativity because I've had some things pop in my head too, but it also allows me to digest what's gone on for the day. And then sure. after I digest it, I have somewhat of an action plan. If there's something I need to do, it, it really helps to get me on to that other side and say, okay, we're on the downside. We're going to get this done and get it completed. I've always struggled with thinking taking a break is in my mind, and this is just me saying out loud, weak because you should be productive and keep going. But at the end of the day, if I can't recharge my batteries, how good am I to my clients, to my business, to my family? It just doesn't work. And you could take one of the elements you talked about time blocking and Elon Musk is, is the king of time blocking in the sense that's what he does. It would make sense given all the things he has yeah. his hands in. But one of the elements of time blocking is to say at the end of every block, you build in a break. So if you have an hour block that you put that in there, whether it's mm -hmm. five or 10 minutes, you stop five minutes before and just, you can just step away, whether it's to get up, go get something to drink, just go out and say something. If you're have a home office, say something to your spouse or whatever, but you step away from the desk in order to then come back in and say, I have now reset myself to start the next block. I like that. I really do. I, I like that. It's, I got another question already. So we're going to go down that. We're going to go down a little bit more of a rabbit hole there. So right. for your clients, I know they're all dynamic and different. What would you say the top two nuggets would be that you could share with the audience about if entrepreneurs are struggling with time management, getting clarity in what they're trying to do? What would be those two things that they could implement today or start working towards? to help them be a better time manager? Yeah, for leaders and entrepreneurs, the biggest elements that they, that the first off goes back to the proactive and reactive elements. Particularly, I find that servant-minded leaders, and this is a good thing, and entrepreneurs, because we want to serve our clients, is we're very reactive. It's last in, first out. It's mm -hmm. what we've talked about. Oh, I got an email from somebody. I want to show them I am it. I'm so concerned about their well-being. I'm going back after that. And I ask, that's where you have to break that cycle. And you break that cycle by planning ahead, plan your day. Now, I'm a proponent of you go two weeks out. You plan your calendar two weeks out. So every Friday, I devote blocked off time that I plan the next two weeks. And then at the end of every day, I affirm, what did I do today? Did I get done what I needed to do? And then I look at tomorrow and say, do I have to change anything? And then when I get up in the morning, that's the first thing that I do again. I do a gut check to say, am I ready to go on to the day? So 
to me, for leaders and entrepreneurs, it's the go to be proactive and not reactive. And then the second thing I ask for leaders and managers to do and entrepreneurs is to honor your time, honor your client's time. And if you have a staff, honor your staff's time. Because too many times leaders get so immersed in what's important to them that or owners that it's all about, I am solving my problem right now for me today. And that could solve your client's problem, but maybe it's, I'm going to wait to, so I know when I go try to solve this problem for them, they're in a time frame that they're receptive to it. And then if you have staff, you honor your staff's time as much as yours. So if you, before you go to say, I'm going to pull somebody to go into this, to follow up on this wonderful idea I've created. You say, what impact is it going to be to them if I choose to make that time? So those are the two elements for me that entrepreneurs need to be mindful of. I love it. Those are some great ideas. And I'm thinking it back to my prior life. And when I was in corporate America, I lived to, to be in meetings all day. I just went from meeting to meeting. And it's like, <laughs> how did I get anything done? Oh, I didn't. I just had to struggle and work more hours to get the basics done. And... I see that today and I'm like, I don't, I manage two to 3,000 people at my peak when I was there. And, and that's just a whole nother mess. But today, wow. yeah, call centers, collection agencies, mm -hmm. legal, financial instruments, all that stuff, back office. But whether you're managing one person or a hundred people or a thousand people, whatever the case is, you hit the nail on the head is you got to respect time. And that doesn't seem to go very well in corporate America. Everybody's just about getting to the end result and the end result is get in a meeting, get this and then and move to the next. And you're not really trying to be, I guess the best way to describe it is effective. And that's where I'm at today is I want to be as effective as I possibly can each and every day. And I know there's things that I need to do, but then there's also ways to improve my effectiveness. And I'm still trying to figure that out. And I'm eight years into this entrepreneur journey full time. I've been side hustling it for almost 12 but it's still a work in progress. And that, the best way to describe it is every day I try to learn something and then take, whether it be good or bad, take what I get from that and see what I can do to improve myself. And I think that's the only way that we can potentially become better leaders and entrepreneurs. And your description there is one of the other elements and phrases I don't like is the term time management itself. No deference to managers. Because we've all, I've been one, and if anyone's listening, they're, if they're a manager. But the idea of manage is simply to take care of what's in front of you a lot. It's this idea. It's almost reactive again. Something's happening. I'm going to manage that. And so I push time optimization because to me, that is continuous improvement. Just like you said, I look at what I did and I said, how can I then apply that better in the future? Or how can I institute that deeper in the future? And so I prefer people to think of, look at it as optimization because it's a continuous cycle. It's a continuous view of improvement. I worked for a company one time that used lean principles in manufacturing Ooh. from the Japanese. And in that case, it, you never reached perfection, but you always sought it. And I felt that's the same that we should do with our time. If anybody can wake up one day and go through the entire day and they close their eyes at the end of the day and said, I used every second to the most of its ability. I want to meet that person because I have not met them yet. And I know it's not me, but it's still quote worth the time pun intended to invest in that continuous improvement. That's, that's deep, but it's truly what we need. We could go on for hours on this and we're hitting to that, that bottom of 30 minutes. So before we wrap it all up, a couple of questions to ask you. Are you currently taking on clients? Yes. So I do, like I said, I work with the in-career portion would be okay. individuals. Okay. So somebody comes to me directly and says, help me. But then I have a whole team dynamic. So I will work with teams and entire businesses that basically says we'll handle the individual needs of each team. But we'll also talk about the team challenges 
and address how a leader can identify and help his entire team improve, his, his or her team improve in theirs. And then the second element is individuals and couples who are like, I'm getting ready to ride off into the sunset and I'm going to say, yeah. hold on, you need to spend some time investing how you're going to spend that time. And then, of course, because so many people in the financial services industries, financial advisors and planners deal with people. I work with financial firms directly to help their right. clients craft that strategy. That's great. And the best place that potential clients could reach out to you? So they can just go to Infinity Lifestyle Design. That's one, one word, infinitylifestyledesign.com. And you get on the front page and it'll guide you to where you need to go, whether you're in career or post-career. I will make sure your website gets linked in the show notes. Sir, thank you very much for coming on. It's been a pleasure and thank you for being patient and with the ups and downs we've had to get you on here, but I was grateful to have you on. Ryan, thank you so much. It's been an honor and a privilege as well. Thank you, sir.